G'day, Adam, VK4GHZ. We're gonna take a look at ICOM's IC910 and its high stability frequency option, the CR293, and getting it on frequency. This one's always been a little bit off since I got it. About 150 hertz at two meters, 450 hertz at 70. But uh, at 1296, it was about 1.3 kilohertz off, which became a little bit annoying. This unit has the CR293 high stability option fitted. It's stable, but just a little bit off frequency. The manual says you have to remove the top cover to access the test point to measure the oscillator's frequency. Well, it's even easier than that. You don't need to remove the top cover at all, just the bottom cover, which we need to take off anyway to make the adjustment. There's only seven screws, three at the front, two at the rear, two on either side. I've actually already taken the screws out. And we can access this master 30.2 meg reference uh, signal right here. This is actually the reference feed that goes off to the 1296 module. If you've got the 1296 module installed, just uh, disconnect it. It's best to, rather than just ripping it out via the cable, just to uh, grab some small pliers and just lift it out via the connector. Now to measure this, I've got a, an old HP frequency counter. It's uh, locked from an external 10 meg reference which comes from my Thunderbolt uh, GPS disciplined oscillator. So I've got full confidence that the reading is accurate and can be relied upon. And by the way, if you're thinking about getting a counter for the shack, you can get surplus professional equipment at a fraction of what they would have cost new. There's plenty to be found on eBay. This one was $110 bundled with another item and it works up to one gigahertz. The important thing to look for is the ability to lock it to an external reference or being able to modify it to do so. JCAR have a 2.7 gig counter, but it needs a 13 meg reference. So be aware of what reference you have and what reference you need. Now onto tweaking the CR293. The surface mount trimmers used in these have a very shallow recess, so it can be actually quite difficult to find a tool that sits in there to adjust it. But one of these JCAR trimmers does the job quite well. There's a small plastic cap we need to remove. I've just clipped a low value resistor on the end of the test lead, it happens to be 51 ohms, and with one of the legs bent over like that, it sits into the socket uh, quite well. Now I've already adjusted this, and with a bit of careful tweaking, it's really not hard to get it exactly dead on. Let's increase the gating time of the counter, and we'll get an extra digit of resolution to play with. Uh, it's not that hard to tweak it, and get it really, really close. Okay, now that we've got an extra digit, we can see that this is now megahertz, hundreds of kilohertz, tens of kilohertz, kilohertz, hundreds of hertz, tens of hertz, hertz, and this digit at the end now is 0.1 of a hertz. As you can see, I've got that to better than one hertz, so I'm pretty happy with that. Now, just because a digital display has lots and lots of digits, it's nothing to be impressed about. But the fact that this counter is uh, locked to an external reference, which is GPS locked, I'm pretty confident that this reading is quite accurate. As with any digital display, you really should ignore the last digit. Um, so this is telling me it's 30.2 megs and it's pretty damn close. To verify the reference has been set correctly, I'm going to use this homebrew microwave signal generator and uh, listen for its signal at 1296 megs. This generator is based on the $100 VK3 XDK PLL board. I've put it in a box, added some switches, and the ability to feed it with an external 10 meg reference. So both the signal generator and the counter are locked to the same reference. The only variable here is the IC910. Let's dial up 1296.0, position three on this one. Plug the external reference in, turn it on. Let's dial up 1296 on the radio. Have a tune around for the zero beat. And as you can see, we're within about 50 hertz at almost 1300 megahertz, so that's not too bad. You could do this at 70 centimeters, but you're going to see any errors much easier up at the higher frequency. I'm actually quite happy with that. I've been uh, monitoring this for over 48 hours now and um, turning the rig off, back on again, checking it again and it's amazing how stable these CR293s really are. It uh, will always return to within about 0.4 of 1 hertz 
to where it was set. And that only takes a minute or two for that to stabilize. So what about temperature stability? Aha, uh -huh. well, have a heat gun and we'll find that out. So what we need to do is just disconnect the 23 reference feed again. Lift the PLL shield, which is only two, four, six screws, which I've already taken out. And just hold that out of the way. We'll reconnect the frequency counter feed. And we'll get 30.2 on the counter. Let's give it a blast with the heat gun. Looking at the counter, it's, um, it's actually getting quite hot. Oh, there we go. It moved 0.1 of the hertz. It's only moved 0.1 so far. Still no more movement. It's actually quite hot in there. Yeah. Oh, too hot to touch. Now, it's only moved 0.1 of the hertz in 30 megahertz so um, even with, the, even with the, uh, the high temperature as you'd expect it to build up inside the rig from operating all day but, um, very impressive look I was actually looking into uh, GPS locking this rig but uh, I seriously don't think it's worth the effort or uh, expense in doing that the uh, CR2 293 is actually pretty darn good I'm very impressed with it the CR293 is around $180 and it isn't that difficult to fit, which is described on page 74 of the IC910 instruction manual. You'll need to remove the bottom cover, remove the PLL shield, unscrew and lift the PLL board out to desolder the standard crystal and solder in the new unit. So that's the CR293 in an ICOM IC910. It's pretty easy to adjust it to be spot on and the stability is really, really good. I'm actually quite surprised. It seems to be certainly much better than the uh, 0.5 part per million spec that ICOM uh, put on it. So that's it. We'll see you on 23 centimeters EMA.